So looking at the fraction seven eighths, um, remember we talked about how when we write an Egyptian fraction, we can only write an Egyptian fraction that is made up of the sum of unit fractions. Now, just again, a reminder of what a unit fraction is. A unit fraction is any fraction that has a one in the numerator uh, would give us a unit fraction. So fractions like one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth. Now, remember Fibonacci, uh, that famous mathematician, told us that we should always start with the largest possible unit fraction. So what I always ask myself is I start with this biggest unit fraction here, which is one half. And I ask myself, is this fraction bigger than one half? Uh, seven eighths. Seven eighths is bigger than one half. So I'm always going to start off with one half is going to be my first fraction. So we have one half and we need to see what else we need to add to one half to get up to seven eighths. Now, an easy way to start here is I'm going to take one half away from seven eighths. I'm going to take seven eighths minus one half. And remember, if we make common denominators, we know that one half is the same as four eighths which would leave me with three more eighths. Now, you would think that I could just say one half plus three eighths, but remember in Egyptian fractions, the numerator cannot be a number other than one. So we can't just write three eighths. So we think, have to think, what unit fraction can we now take out of three eighths? So I look at my unit fractions, and a denominator that you might realize works well with eighths is fourths. Now, I know that one fourth is the same as two eighths if I multiply these each by two. One fourth is the same as two eighths. So if I add one half plus one fourth, that's kind of like adding four eighths plus two eighths, which gives me six eighths. Now, I'm trying to make seven eighths. So if I take away from my three eighths, if I take away that one fourth that I just added, which is two eighths, that leaves me with one eighth. Now, one eighth is a unit fraction. So this works out nicely because we can say that seven eighths is made up of one half, one fourth, and one eighth. And that would be the answer that I'm looking for. One half, one fourth, and one eighth. And if we wanted to go back and prove, is this true? We could say, well, one half is four eighths, one fourth is two eighths, plus one eighth is one eighth. And altogether, those are the same thing as seven eighths. But we wrote it as the sum of three unit fractions. Now, you're going to get the chance to try this on uh, four or five different examples. Remember that when you do so, always start out by trying the biggest unit fraction first. So try your half first. Also look at your denominators and then think what other denominators would work well with that denominator. When I saw eight, I knew, well, four is going to work well with eight because eight is a multiple of four um, and so on. Now, for all of the examples that I've given you, most of them are only going to require two unit fractions. And then a couple of them are going to require three unit fractions like the one that we just did. Remember, for your unit fractions, it has to have a one in the denominator. So for each of the questions that you're doing, for each of the fractions that you have to represent with unit fractions, this here, what I wrote, would be an example of what your answer might look like. So one half plus one fourth plus one eighth is the same as seven eighths. So Fibonacci did a lot of different things. He showed us this way that we can uh, write Egyptian fractions. So give this a try. See if you can write some of these Egyptian fractions.